Screen Directors Playhouse. Star, Douglas Fairbanks. Production, Raffles. Director, Sam Wood. This is the Screen Directors Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's All-Star Festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Tonight, the Screen Directors Playhouse presents one of the all-time favorite mystery figures, Raffles, starring Douglas Fairbanks. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's the first act of Raffles. Extra special, read about the amateur Cracksburg paper, British Museum Rob, famous painted left and read all about it, amateur Cracksburg does it again. I am the so-called notorious amateur cracksman. My name? Well, not naturally for the years of Scotland Yard. A.J. Raffles. What is crime? What is... What motivates crime? What makes me a criminal? Greed? Selfishness, perhaps? The spirit of adventure? Very definitely. Loyalty to a friend in need? Ever. And then, as in the case of the missing Medici Venus, purely sentiment. Sir Wilfred, this lady claims to have the missing Venus. Hmm? Was that you say, Inspector McKenzie? Here it is, Inspector. Where did you get it? It just came in the post in the ordinary way. I opened the parcel and there it was, and this card was with it. Hmm. I saw your farewell performance when I was a boy. I've never forgotten it. Would you return this painting to dear old Scotland Yard for me? Hmm. I understand there's a reward offered. So, you're Maud Holden, the actress. Well, I used to be. You have no idea why this should have been sent to you? No, none at all, except, as he says, that he remembers me. Uh, When was your farewell performance, Miss Holden? Oh, 20 years ago, 1931. Uh Well, if I might be personal, might I inquire your uh, financial status? Well... To be perfectly honest, since I retired from the stage, I have been a little straightened. Well, then it would seem that the amateur cracksman is uh, something of a benefactor. I don't know what you mean. You'll receive a 500-pound reward. Five? Ah, That's a new light on the cracksman. He's turning Robin Hood. Robin Hood, my eye. He's playing with us. Uh, Now we've got to announce that the thing's been quietly sent back. Oh, if only we knew one thing about him. Oh, I know many things about him. He's a man with a sense of humor and a sporting sense. He's never made a big haul, even if he could have. He's never robbed a whole safe. He's just taken one thing. No, no, he, he's a gentleman who steals for the fun of it. Ah. And everything he does tells us something about him. Now, we learned his age today. Hmm? Aye. He was a boy in 1931 when he saw Miss Holden act. Now, that makes him about uh, 30 now. Yes, a lot of help that is in catching him. We can't arrest every man of about 30. No, but it narrows the field. Mr. Raffles, it's half past eight, sir. Oh, thank you, Barakoff. Will you be wanting a taxi, sir? No, thanks, I'm going to walk. And, sir, you'll excuse me, sir. What is it? It's these bills, sir. Some of them are becoming, well, uh, a trifle exigent, if you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> oh, yes. You, you said the grim total was about um, 200 pounds, didn't you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, that's all right, then. I'm arranging for that this very evening. Barakoff, where did you put my kitten? That stray alley cat you brought home? Barakoff, that kitten may be a stray to some people, but to me, she's money in the bank. Hand her over. Where is she? Ah. Shop with lights. Start searching. 
Throw off the alarm, someone. Hmm. Safe is untouched. Great Scott. Look. A kitten playing with a burglar alarm wire. Well, now, how did he get in Takia's jewelry store? Must have got locked in. Here, pussy. Pussy, pussy. <laughs> Hi, you're having a good time, aren't you, you, you cat burglar? Alert. While the concentration was on the kitten, unnoticed, I slipped inside the store and sat myself down beside the safe. It was all I could do to keep myself from beginning to operate on the combination, but since discretion is the better part of valor, I waited until the police left. Then, methodically, I opened the safe and withdrew sufficient diamonds, uncut, the more difficult to identify, just enough to settle my debtors. My work was done, so I threw the alarm, casually dusting my evening clothes, and nonchalantly strolled out of the store. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I left a note for Inspector McKenzie. The kitten lives in Cork Street. Let it off lightly. The amateur cracksman. Then I went to the Club Croydon to finish off my night of revelry. Cigarettes, mister? Gwen, you idiot. (laughs) (laughs) Posing as the cigarette girl. Oh, hello, AJ. (laughs) Funny. Well, my old sitting rabbit. You two on the town together tonight? I suppose it is a little odd for brother and sister. (laughs) Won't you join us and add a touch of romance to the proceedings? Yes, AJ, do. Well, I'm sufficiently coaxed. Waiter, a table for three. I'm glad we caught you. So am I. Seems so silly the way we meet four times a week at parties (laughs) and and crowded functions, have one dance together and then get whisked apart. You're too popular, my dear. You're too much of a celebrity. Well, tonight we'll stick together and nobody shall separate us. Gwen, Bunny, come and join us. I want to meet Mr. Ruffles. No. Well, tonight we'll stick together and nobody shall separate us. I'm Lady Melrose, Mr. Ruffles, oh, and I'm you. glad to meet you. And I'm my husband, and I can't think what she wants to meet you for. She doesn't care two hoops about cricket. No, but I know a personable young man when I see one. Come and sit here, Mr. Raffles. Yeah, waiter, waiter, bring some chairs and some glasses. Uh, have some champagne, Mr. Raffles. Yes, thank you. Filthy stuff. My wife lives on it. Uh, <laughs> might we have a picture of you and Lady Melrose, Mr. Raffles? Uh, Just look at each other, if you will. How could I look anywhere else? (laughs) What a beautiful necklace. That's it. Thank you, sir. Getting that face of yours in the papers again, my dear? Hmm? Yes. I thought I should have to go through the divorce court to do that at my time of life. (laughs) Now Mr. Raffles comes along and saves me the trouble. I should be proud to go through the divorce court with you, Lady Melrose. (laughs) Would you care to dance? Oh. No, I think that would be going a little too far. Uh-huh. You dance with Gwen if you'd like to. But mind you, hurry back to me. Will you, Gwen? Love to. Nice going, AJ. What does AJ stand for? Uh. You know, I've never heard you called anything but that or <laughs> raffle. You've got names, haven't you? They couldn't have christened you with initials. Yes, yes, I've got names. What are they? Oh, no, you don't. Well, why won't you tell me? <laughs> because it's the only bad thing a doting mother ever did to me. Oh, is it Archibald? No. Algernon. No. Um, Adolphus. <laughs> it's no good, Gwen. I, I've never told anyone. I shall have to look you up in who's who. I lied to who's who. Oh, then it's Ananias. Let's go out on the terrace. What, and be alone? Uh, be very nice. There have been a lot of opportunities before. I thought lately that you deliberately avoided them. Gwen, hmm? you know there's nobody I'd rather be with than you. I am not Lady Melrose. You needn't pay me compliments. It's not a compliment. I mean it, Gwen. Go on. Well, that's all. Let's go outside. AJ, tell me something. What? That shell, you... You never used to have it. Shell? The one you keep going back into. Just as we're getting along beautifully, like tonight and a hundred other times... You just go away. You you aren't there anymore. What is it? Do I bore you? Never. Well, what then? I I don't run after you too much, do I? Of course not. I've tried oh. not to, even though I've sometimes wanted to. Oh. <laughs> but it's silly going on like this, especially when you and Bunny are such friends. If I'm a nuisance or a bore, I wish you'd tell me, and, and then I can stop being one. Oh, Gwen, darling. No, no, let me finish. Honestly, A.J., I... I'd rather know if you don't want me. I, I'll get over it, really, I would. But sometimes I've thought that you 
well, liked me. And, and I've grown up, well, more than liking you. But if it's no good, I'd rather that you told me. Gwen, <laughs> darling, don't cry. Of course I like you. Better than anyone in the world. It's... Well, it's, it's, it's only that... That, that uh, you don't love me. Is that it? I, I, I can't explain, darling, but please believe that I love you. Love you more than you'll ever know. Paraclough! Paraclough! Did you call, sir? Yes, did I wake you? Quite all right, sir. Well, that means I did. Barraclough, you see before you a changed man. Indeed, sir. Indeed. A changed man and an amazed one. Amazed at life and at himself. I'm going to be married, Barraclough. My congratulations, sir. May I inquire when? Ah, that has not yet been decided. But soon, Barraclough, soon, soon. It must be soon. Everything will be different, Barraclough. I'm going to turn over a new leaf. Have done with the old life of gaiety and... And, uh... Well, with the, uh... <laughs> the old life. Is that all, sir? That's all, Barraclough, for you. For me, life is just beginning. Rather. Oh, uh, uh, Barraclough. Yes, sir. Did I remember to tell you that she is the most wonderful gal in the world? No, sir, I hoped you'd spare me that. <laughs> Good night, sir. Uh, uh, one moment. Uh, get me an envelope, will you? Very well, sir. Temptation. These uncut diamonds. Such lovely baubles. To return them or not to return them. We're fresh out of envelopes, sir. Mm. Well, in that case, perhaps fate has decreed a decision. I shall place my treasure back in my pocket. Barraclough, hand me my cigarettes. Yes, sir. Now, I empty the packet and insert the diamonds so. Farewell, a long farewell to all my greatness. And now a pen, Barraclough. Yes, sir. Here you are, sir. Inspector Mackenzie, you would never understand why I am returning this. Farewell, the amateur cracksman. When you go into a store, the salesman behind the counter doesn't get you to buy his product by holding up a printed sign. He talks to you. His talk does the job of selling where print won't, because people sell better than paper. Personal contact is a vital factor, whether it's over-the-counter selling or advertising. Now, the best advertising a manufacturer could possibly do would be to talk with each of his customers. Well, it isn't practical to hop around the country calling at every door. But an advertiser can reach millions of people. Over five million on this program, for example, directly and at once with network radio. Radio gives a manufacturer that important talk with his customers. And he can bring the clarity and force of his products home to you at less cost than with any other method of advertising. Yes, people do sell better than paper. And people sell more economically on NBC Radio. And now the second act of Raffles, starring Douglas Fairbanks. Something most peculiar about the fantasy of a dream. It takes you to the height of ecstasy and at the very same motion draws you into the very dregs of disaster. Here I was, sleeping and dreaming of my life with Gwen, and the happiness and joy and the disturbing thought kept pounding clear. Somewhere along the line, I had made a mistake. I was to be detected. Hard as I tried to lose this feeling of insecurity, the same dream kept recurring. It was as if Satan and the Archangel Michael were locked in desperate struggle for my soul. Now... 
Hmm? Yeah. Oh, oh, Gwen, Gwen, do... <laughs> morning, morning, morning. Angie, I just had another thought. Were you named after anyone? Hmm? Anyone famous, I mean. No? Huh? Oh. <laughs> well, uh, yes, sort of, in a way, I suppose. Yes. It isn't Aristotle, is it? <laughs> no, it isn't Aristotle. Uh, Aristophanes? <laughs> You're being very classical so early in the morning, aren't you? Well, I do think a girl has the right to know the name of the man she's going to marry. <laughs> You'll have to tell the clergyman, won't you? <laughs> it is true, isn't it? Last night did happen. It wasn't all a dream. If it was, it's a dream we're never going to wake from. What's the time? Eight o'clock. The middle of the night? Whoa, when can I see you? This morning, this afternoon, tonight? <laughs> no, I've got to go to the Melrose's for the weekend. Oh, put them off. Go on. I can't, I promised. Why don't you come too? They asked you, you know. And I refused, my dear. The paths of matrimony lead but to a job. And today, today I remove the shackles of cricket and with complete abandon offer myself to servitude for the insignificant sum of 50 pounds per week to the first taker. What am I bid? Gwen? Are you there? Yes, but I'm still trying to catch my breath. <laughs> now, off to work you go. Shall we say goodbye? You say it first. No, no, I don't want to. Neither do I. Let's say it together. All right. When I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Goodbye, goodbye darling. darling. Good morning, sir. Morning, Barraclough. Your tray, sir. Thank you, thank you. But why are the papers with my cereal? Papers? It's billed, sir. Oh. You said you were expecting to arrange for some cash to meet with them last night. Yeah. I trust it didn't escape your memory in the excitement of your matrimonial intaglios, if I may be permitted the phrase. <laughs> no, no, it didn't escape my memory, but I'm afraid it was a washout, Barraclough. You'll have to stave them off. Oh, you've done it before. You can do it again. I should have thought so, that if you were contemplating matrimony, it would be, well, as well to start clean. My own opinion exactly, Barraclough. And now stop being sordid and go out and start my bar. And when that's done, lay out my work clothes. Dinner jacket or tails, sir? <laughs> Neither, my overalls. Oh. By the way, sir, Mr. Bunny stayed the night. Oh? Came in after you retired. He's in the spare bedroom sleeping. Wasn't feeling very well. Oh. Quite upset. Oh, I'll give him a drink and in a jiffy he'll be fully recovered. I'll wake him up after my bath. Bunny, I'm going to cure your headache. <laughs> hey, hey. Better club, there's, there's no one here. Well, that's very odd, sir. He said he'd spend the night here, sir. Huh. Can't have gone out, why... There's his coat, sir. Great Scott. Barraclough. Hmm? Do you smell gas? Yes, sir. Uh, over here, sir. On the other side of the bed, on the floor. Mr. Bunny. 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 Bunny, for heaven's sake. Get, get the window open. Get... Here, lend, lend me a hand. Get, uh, up, up here on the bed with him. Come yes, on. sir. Here. Is he dead, sir? No, thank heaven. We're in time. No, I can't think he... He was behaving strangely, but I never dreamed... Breathe in, Bunny. Breathe in. Breathe. Breathe. Bunny. Bunny. Bunny, wake up. Bunny, Bunny, wake up, old man. It's Raffles. Shall I get a doctor, sir? No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. He's, he's coming around. We don't want any in, outsiders in on this. Um, get, get some whiskey, will you? Very well, sir. Bunny. Oh. Oh. Raffles. Bunny, what in heaven's name were you thinking of? Oh, I'm a thief. Well, one way or another, we're all thieves at times. Now, lie down. Keep quiet now. I can't. I've got to talk. I've got to tell you. I've written a check, Raffles. A big check, and it's no good. What made you do it? Cards. Ah, oh, yes, yes, I've been playing again. Yes, I, I know I promised you I wouldn't, but... Monday morning, Raffles, when they get their check at the bank, I'll be, I'll be disgraced and they'll, they'll treat me like a common thief. I, I am a common thief. Now, now, Bunny. I'll be arrested, Raffles. Now, Bunny, I will know I'll never let them do anything like that to you. I'm not asking you to help me. I, I'm not worth helping. Suppose you let me be the best judge of that, eh? Oh, I don't deserve your friendship. I know what honesty and honor mean to you. Oh, I got myself into this mess. Let me get myself out of it. Now, now, I'll do no such thing. You just keep quiet now. 
take it easy. Tell me, um, how much was the check? A uh, thousand pounds. A thousand pounds. Well, two days isn't much time to find a thousand pounds, is it? Well, well, don't you worry, Bunny. You keep quiet and let me think. We'll, uh, we'll have to use our wits in this. Our wits? Hmm, I should say my wits. <laughs> Bunny. Yes? Were you invited to Lord and Lady Melrose's for the weekend? I was, yes. Could you... Could you take me with you? Yes, why? Um, I was just thinking I'd like to play some cricket. Oh, that's easy. Easy? Easy. <laughs> Playing cricket and keeping an eye on Lady Melrose's emeralds was most difficult. For her emeralds were the answer to Bunny's prayers. It's funny about crime. Here I was prepared to desert it, and yet I wasn't. Call it loyalty, call it friendship, call it complete idiocy. But a friend in need is a friend indeed. And that recurrent dream of last night suddenly became more than symbolic. Just... Why was Lord Melrose in deep conversation with Inspector Mackenzie? What was he doing down here at the Melrose estate? Why was he so suddenly interested in cricket? I'm sorry to intrude, Lord Melrose, but I shan't keep you long. Uh, here's my card. What's this? What's this? Scotland Yard? What is it you want? Have you ever heard of the amateur cracksman? Yes, of course. Uh, what's that got to do with it? We've had certain information which makes me very anxious to ask you one or two questions. Questions? Questions? What about? Have you given your new telephone number to anyone? Yes, I suppose I have. Did you give it to anybody yesterday? Uh, anyone who wrote it down? Mm, I don't remember, no. You didn't see anyone write it on a piece of paper? Uh, quite a thin piece of paper? Piece of paper, piece of paper. Oh, yes, I wrote it on a piece of paper myself. I come to think of it. Oh, really? It's that beastly nightclub my wife dragged me to last night. I, I gave it to Bunny. I remember now. Yes. Uh -huh. Did you by any chance put the paper on anything? A book or anything? A book, book. My good fellow, what did I be doing with a book in a nightclub? No, I put it on a packet of cigarettes or something. Well, what's it matter? Stolen diamonds were returned in an empty packet of cigarettes which had trace marks with your telephone number. Now, uh, to whom did you say that you gave your number? Bunny Manders. Uh, he and his sister are staying here the weekend. Uh, Lord Melrose, if it wouldn't have been inconveniencing you too much, I wonder if you'd allow me to stay at your house for a while. Stay at my house? Oh, bless my soul, Inspector McKenzie. That's a little odd, don't you think? Well, how am I going to explain it? Oh, I think we might be able to manage an explanation... I'd rather you didn't tell your guests who I am. You call me Mr. Uh, Cameron. Oh, uh, Raffles, this is Mr... A Cameron. Uh, yes, Cameron, uh, Mr. Raffles. Mm. How are you, Cameron? And this is Mr. Bunny Manders. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Have you got a cigarette on you? I am afraid I don't smoke. It... Oh. George, what do you mean by making all this commotion? If you don't like music yourself, you might at least be considerate of others. Look at the way I put up with your cricket. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, buddy, I'm sorry, dear. But I wanted to meet another house guest of ours. Uh, Mr. Cameron, uh, my wife. Mr. who? Cameron, my dear Cameron, one of the Scots Cameron. You know, you know, we used to go deer stalking together. Oh. How do you do, Mr. Cameron? Uh, uh, Gwen, my dear, uh, th this is Mr. Cameron. How do you do? Uh, if you don't mind, Mr. Raffles and I, I'd like a breath of fresh air. I, Mr. Raffles? Aye. Come along, old fellow. That was good of you not to give me away just now before the others. Not at all, Inspector McKenzie. I believe in helping the police when I can. What, what brings you here? Not the cracksman again, I hope. Oh, yes, yes. Oh. I was after the cracksman the last time we met, wasn't I? <laughs> You know, I've always had a theory that he was a myth. Invented by Scotland Yard to cover a uh, multitude of, shall we call them, failures. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're being very hard on us, Mr. Apples. No. No, the cracksman exists, all right. In fact, I know quite a bit about him. 
I gave my chief quite a portrait of him yesterday. Really? Ah, well, that was very clever of him. Uh, only the face and the name were missing, but uh, I have an idea I may be able to fill those in before long. I'm going to meet the amateur cracksman, Mr. Apples. I'll hook him, play him, and land him like a fish. Like a fish, did you say? I'm a fisherman, Mr. Apples. Yeah, but you still haven't told me what are you fishing for here, or, or is that a state secret? I prefer not to divulge it. Well, in any case, I feel that it's nothing that need worry me. Eh? Oh, I think you can go about your business undisturbed. Thank you, Inspector. After those reassuring words, I will. Running away from me, A.J.? Oh, <laughs> just for a breath of air. <sighs> what a wonderful night. In such a night as this, when the sweet wind did gently kiss the trees. Troilus, methinks, mounted the Trojan walls and sighed his soul toward the Grecian tents. Hey, what's that? The Merchant of Venice, Mr. Bunny. Oh, a Shakespearean scholar, Cameron, as well as a fisherman. Well, a lover of the theater. Uh-huh. You know, the finest performance of the Merchant of Venice I ever saw was with Maud Holden as Portia. I imagine she was a bit before your time, Mr. Bunny. Oh, no. As a matter of fact, Raffles and I saw her together. He took me to her farewell performance when we were kids. Yes, she was wonderful. Whatever became of her, dead, I suppose. No, I don't think so. I heard of her only the other day. Well, if you ever see her, I wish you'd tell her that she has a great admirer in me. Me too. Aye, of course. Oh, Mr. Raffles, may I see you a moment? Coming, Lady Melrose. Excuse me. Mr. Raffles, where on earth did George get hold of that dreadful man, Cameron? Do you know who or what he is? Well, I, I don't think it's fair they're keeping you in the dark like this. I, that man's a detective. What? Mm. Well, what's he doing here? Why, you think perhaps he suspects an attempt on your necklace. My necklace? Oh, nonsense. Nobody's going to steal it. I agree. After all, I imagine that you keep it in a safe. No, we've got one, but I don't believe in safes. I keep it in my bedroom. Oh. oh. Well, uh, do you think I shouldn't? Oh, it'll be all right with the detective here. You, you'll probably sleep outside your door all night. Oh, he'll do no such thing. Well, he has to be where the emeralds are. Then I'll send them to the safe and he can sleep in the library. Good, good. And yet, well, if there are thieves, the safe is probably the first place they'd go to, isn't it? That's just what I've always said. Then I'll keep them in my room. Mm. And have the detective like a spaniel on your mat? <laughs> no. Well, you can't have it both ways, or or can you? Yes, I think I can. I've got an idea. Mr. Raffles, I'm mm. a very wily old woman. <laughs> George? Excuse me, dear. George, I'm going to bed. I want you to come up and get my jewel case and put it in the safe for me. What's that? But you've never done that in your life before. There's always a first time. <laughs> Let's go. Good night, Mr. Apples. Uh, good night. Good night. Sleep well, Lady Melrose. Uh, Mr. Apples, a moment, please. Yes, Inspector? I just saw a picture of you and Lady Melrose. Were you at the nightclub with Mr. Bunny last night? Mm, why, yes. Yes, of course. Anything wrong? <laughs> no, of course not. I was just asking. Um, you got a cigarette? Yes. Yes. Here you are. Oh, I'm sorry, I've, I've smoked my last. Well, I'll say good night. Well, I'll uh, come up with you. Splendid. Ah, are you sleepy? I. Are you? Well, I'll probably read for a bit before turning in. I suppose your work keeps you pretty tired, doesn't it? Aye, it does. Mm. You know, I can think of only one thing more exciting than tracking down criminals the way you do. And uh, what's that, Mr. Raffle? Dodging you fellows. Good night, Mr. Inspector. The third act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Raffles, starring Douglas Fairbanks, will continue after a brief pause for station identification.
This is the Screen Director's Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's All-Star Festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by Anison, for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. Now we continue with the third act of Raffles, starring Douglas Fairbanks. The act of stealing wantonly is that of a fool. To steal for the honor of a friend, mm, that is debatable. But when the friend is the brother of the woman you love, the debate ceases to exist. Bunny needed help, and I'd given my word. And now, as I watched Lord Melrose carefully open the wall safe in the library and deposit an empty jewel case, alertly eyed by Inspector Mackenzie, a feeling of complete confidence overcame me. This job was going to be far easier than I had imagined. It was as simple as ABC. All I had to do was wait for Lady Melrose to fall asleep and then enter her bedroom and the emeralds were mine. As the lights in the library dimmed and the stillness of the eerie country night crept in, I opened my door and received the shock of my life. Entering Lady Melrose's bedroom was an absolute stranger wearing a cap to shield his face. Before I could follow, Gwen came towards me. Alone at last. Darling. Do you realize that we've been engaged for over 24 hours and I've seen so little of you? I know, darling, but right now I... There seems to be a conspiracy to tear us apart. (laughs) Mr. Cameron, Lady Melrose, I've just had glimpses of you. Darling, once this weekend is over, it'll be utterly and completely different, I promise you. Do you love me? More than you'd believe. And now, good night, darling. Good night, A.J. It isn't amphitryon, is it? (laughs) No, dear. (laughs) I didn't have to wait too long for the unidentified thief to leave in Lady Melrose's room. Naturally, I was annoyed at this unexpected interference. But then I realized I could use this new turn of events to my advantage. As he passed my hiding place from behind... I handed him a judo cut (coughs) on the neck. In the same motion, my hand covered his mouth to prevent an outcry, betraying my wristwatch and chain bracelet. With my free hand, I jerked Lady Melrose's emeralds from his pocket, pulled his cap over his face, kicked his feet from under him. As he fell, I ducked into the bathroom window, into the door. In a moment, he was on his feet, running for the window. That was when all Hades broke loose. I've got him. I've got him. I haven't taken nothing straight, I haven't. Well, an old friend. You what is these for you, aren't they, Crochet? I took nothing, Inspector. Search me. Aye, that I will. Well, Inspector, you weren't far wrong. I congratulate you. I think we're both to be congratulated, Lord Melrose. He didn't get the thing. Is this the cracksman fellow? Who's that? This chap? No. Well, he's pretty measly looking. Oh, I say, what about my wife? Oh, bless my soul. I never thought of that. Well, congratulations, Inspector. Ah, uh, Raffles. Mm, so you caught your fish. Well, what'd you find in his mouth? Nothing. He didn't get a thing. Oh, well, that's to your credit, isn't it? <laughs> Although I must say I'm a little disappointed in your cracksman. Oh, this isn't a cracksman. Oh? No? no, Crochet and I are old acquaintances. I've been responsible for several little uh, um, holidays of his. Oh, just an old lag, eh? Aye. Little like going after salmon and... Landing a minnow, isn't it? (laughs) The salmon is still in the stream, Mr. Raffles. And I'm still a fisherman. I've always heard a fisherman's greatest quality is patience. Her ladyship is sleeping peacefully, thank goodness. Uh She must have slept through a whole thing. She always does. Oh, splendid, splendid. I'm so glad she didn't wake him. Do you have a cigarette, Raffles? Uh, Yes, of course. Here. That's a nice rich watch you're wearing, Mr. Raffles. And that charm bracelet. I've seen it before. Oh, it's little things like that that a bloke like me remembers. Oh, this watch and bracelet haven't any value. No, they have to me. A great value, Mr. Raffles. You'll hear from me again. I'll be out in no time. Come on now. Get a move on your crochet. Hey, Jay. 
bit rest early. I've got to go to town on that business of yours, Bunny. Now? Mm. What earthly excuse are you going to take to old Melrose? Never you mind. I'll look after that at breakfast. Can I come to town with you? No. Nope. Why not? I can't stay here all day, one <laughs> There's nothing to worry about. It'll be all right. I'll have the money for you this evening. Are you sure? As sure as if it were in my pocket now. I want to talk to Gwen before I leave. You decent, darling? AJ, come in. Uh-huh. Darling, hmm? I have a problem. Oh. A difficult one. All right, I'm good at problems. Come on, now tell me. Well, a man loves a gal... She's radiant, fine, straight, untouched. He isn't worthy of her. In every possible way, he's most unworthy. For all that, he loves her. But I... I hope she loves him. She does. That's the problem. It isn't a very hard problem. Oh, yes, it is. Because, you see, he wants to lead a new life for her sake. But he's found he can't do it. The taint is still there. On the first possible excuse, he's gone wrong again. Oh, the excuse was good enough, I suppose, but just the same... If she loves him, she must want to help him. Ah, but he can't disillusion her, don't you see? Goodbye, Gwen, dear. I'm going away now. You sound as if you weren't coming back. I'm not. Oh, please don't say such things. Oh, Gwen, my darling, I love you. I shall always love you. You've made me realize everything I've lost in life. But it's too late now. Dearest. Please! Mother! It's Lady Melrose. Oh, they've robbed me in my sleep. My emeralds. What's going on here? Oh, my emeralds. They've taken them from me. But, my lady, the safe has not been touched. They weren't in the safe. They were in my bedroom. Mr. Rapples, you promised to protect me. Where were you? Yes, Mr. Rapples. Where were you? Where was I? When? When the alarm went off, Mr. Rapples. Where were you then? Why, in my room, in my room, writing letters. Oh. A fine detective you are, Mr. Cameron, letting them steal my necklace. Detective, indeed. (laughs) I believe it was you who stole it. Have him searched. Who told you I was a detective, Lady Melrose? Do you think I don't know detectives' feet when I see them? (laughs) Oh, you were so right, Mr. Raffles, in everything you said. (sighs) But I did think you'd protect me. Kitty, go back to bed, my dear. You're all upset. A house full of men, and not one of you lifts a finger. I'll give a thousand pounds, a thousand pounds reward to anyone who'll give me those emeralds back. That's a very liberal reward, Lord Melrose. Aye, it's too liberal. I'll get the jewels back for you without it. Well, nobody's to leave this house. What's that, Inspector? Everyone will have to be searched. Well, I won't have it. I won't have my guests suspected. I'll let the necklace go wrong. It's too late for that, sir. The matter's in my hands now. Mr. Raffles, we'll begin with you. Interesting the places one can think of hiding stolen jewels in a moment of stress. As Mackenzie searched me from my handkerchief in my breast pocket, I removed the emeralds and quickly transferred them into his pocket. It stood to reason he wasn't going to search himself. When his fruitless mission was completed, I sidled up to Mackenzie and deftly transferred the gems to my own person, where (laughs) they belonged. Temporarily, at least, I was safe. AJ, I've got to talk to you. What is it, darling? There's something going on that I don't understand. Oh? AJ, what is it? You weren't in your room last night while the alarm was ringing. I know that. And I've been talking to Lady Melrose. I know that you told her the safest place for her emeralds was in her bedroom. AJ, what does it all mean? Please, darling. Tell me. Please tell me. Tell me that it isn't what I... What I... I'm afraid of. AJ, it wasn't you. Gwen... If you were anyone else in the world, I'd deny it. I can't lie to you. Oh, no, no. Darling, there's nothing you can be thinking or feeling that I haven't pictured and dreaded your feeling about me. That's why I kept away from you, drew into my shell, as you call it. I haven't any right to love you. Then the other night when I took you in my arms, because I couldn't help it any longer... I thought all of that was over and done with forever. But it isn't always quite so easy, you know. Things happened and... Well, there was a reason. A very good reason. Now, what are you going to do now? Well, there's only one thing left. Finish my last job. And then, who knows? Oh, Mr. Raffles. Here are those bags. 
What are you intending to leave here? Quite. That is, with your permission, of course. Uh huh. You may leave. There is no reason to hold you in custody. Thanks, Inspector Mackenzie. Oh, uh, wouldn't you like to search my bags first, or me? <laughs> no, I don't think that'll be necessary. <sighs> ah, it's surprisingly good of you. Well, goodbye, Gwen, dear. Goodbye, A.J. Goodbye, Inspector. And um, good luck with your salmon fishing. I'm thinking of trying a new bait, Mr. Raffles. <laughs> be sure and get a big hook. <laughs> you know, Mum, I like that man. So do I. Oh, too bad. You're letting him go, Inspector? Aye, just that. I've got a scheme. I'm going to take the burglar crochet out of the village jail and get him to London. When I've got him there, I'm going to see that he escapes and then follow him. By Joe. And this isn't the first time that I've set a thief to catch a thief. Now, here's a word from RCA Victor. Any RCA Victor television owner can get the RCA Victor factory service contract. This service contract gives you installation and service by RCA's own factory trained technicians. It gives you coverage of parts and tubes for an entire year, including the big picture tube. Or if your set needs attention and you haven't provided for this protection through the RCA Victor factory service contract, simply call the RCA service company branch nearest you. They'll gladly dispatch RCA specialists to your home on a time and material basis. So remember this. Any RCA Victor television owner can get RCA factory service. And you'll see why RCA Victor is America's fastest-selling television when you look at the Regency. You'll see sharp, clear pictures, million-proof performance, superb styling. It's a magnificent television console at a new low price. The RCA Victor Regency. Now, Act Four of Raffles, starring Douglas Fairbanks. Oh, Mr. Raffles, you're back home, sir. A boring weekend, I take it? No, not exactly boring, Barraclough. Any messages? Any letters? These, sir. Oh, bills, bills, bills. All bills, by the look of them. I was afraid so, sir. Barraclough, I want you to go out. I want you to go to the Airways office in Haymarket and get me a ticket on the two o'clock plane for Amsterdam. Here's a tenner. I'm sorry to send you out in this rain, but hurry. Oh, excuse me, sir. The door. AJ. Gwen. Oh, Barraclough, on your way. Yes, sir. Are you alone? There's something I've got to tell you. Crochet has escaped. So? Mackenzie let him escape to come to you. What? I heard him. Set a thief to catch a thief, he said. Oh, I see. Oh, you'll have to get away. I I don't care what you are or what you've done. I, I only know that I couldn't stand it, thinking of you behind bars, dressed in a convict suit. You, you've got to get away. Oh, Gwen, why do things always have to happen too late? You and I, if, if only we'd met in... in time. <laughs> yes, but you'd have been a baby then. Bunny's kid sister. I remember he had a photograph of you at school. Grave little gal with pigtails and big, trusting eyes. Same eyes. <laughs> Perhaps if I'd known you then, I might have been able to be worthy of your trust. A.G., I, I've always loved you. From the beginning, the first time we met, I... Even then, it was too late. It's always been too late for us. Don't let them in. Don't let them in. It's all right. It'll be all right. Wait, I'll, uh, I'll hide these emeralds under the tobacco. Hurry. Darling, your eyes are all red. You, you'd better go in the spare room. Yes, H.G. Oh, my darling. Well, the fisherman. Aye. <laughs> Ah, what can I do for you, fellow sportsman? Come in, come in. Thank you. Let me give you a drink. No, oh, thanks. It's wet enough outside. <laughs> uh, do you mind if I help myself? No. I go right ahead. 
Hey, Crochet's escaped, Mr. Apples. Has he now? Has he? Well, that sounds very careless of you. Was the line not strong enough, even for a minnow? <laughs> what were you using, string and a pin? He's here, somewhere in this block of flats. Is he? I must look out for him. I'm looking out for him. I've got the place surrounded. Then there's nothing to worry about. But the uh, emeralds, Inspector? I'll get them as soon as I've got Crochet. Oh, has he got them? He knows who has. Ah. Do you mind if I take a look around these rooms? For Crochet? By all means. Thank you. Do you mind if I read my letters? By all means. Ah, it's a nice vase, this. Yes. Uh, not big enough for Crochet to hide in, though. Uh, your bedroom? Oh, allow me to show it to you. After you. Aye, you've got a lot of suits. <laughs> and a lot of bills, too. <laughs> Does this door lead to the bathroom? Yes, yes, go in. I'm not bathing now. Ah, empty. Uh, that other door. That is the spare room. May I see it? At the moment, it is occupied by a lady. Her name is not Crochet. Well, I'm a man of the world. You can trust my discretion. How do you do, Inspector? Uh, hello. Dreadful rain, isn't it, Inspector? It was so fine down in the country, too. Aye. Hmm. <clears throat> That's a fine clock you have, Mr. Raffles. Would you like to look at the works? No, thanks. I'll, uh, I'll just sit down on this couch. Do you mind a pipe? No, 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 not at all. We'll, uh, we'll sit down beside you. Hmm? Oh, my. I've forgotten my pouch. Might I use some of your tobacco? Well, it's, it's uh, not very good. Won't, won't, you, um, won't you let me give you a cigar? I've got some of the best cigars you've ever tasted. Here, here here's one. Thank you. Oh. I'll smoke this after dinner tonight. Well, let's take another for now. No, I'd rather have my pipe. Oh, oh, oh look out. My, my cigarette is burning the couch. Oh, well, I'll put it out for oh, you. While you're doing it, I'll fill your pipe for you. Well, if oh. you don't mind, I'll fill my own pipe. With pleasure, Inspector. We've spotted Crochet, Inspector. All right, I'll come along. Uh, you better put somebody outside Mr. Apple's door in case. In case... In case Crochet tries breaking in that way, we want to give you every protection, Mr. Apples. Uh, thank you. And in case Mr. Apples tries breaking out. What are you going to do, A.J.? You, you can't stay here forever. I don't know. I do. Hands up! What do you want, Crochet? I want those sparklers, so hand them over. Mr. Crochet, if I were to hand over those jewels, it would do neither of us any good. The police are after both of us. They know you're here. Oh, yes, I don't think. You don't get away with that. Either you give me those emeralds, or I'll shoot the daylights out of you. All right, then, go ahead and shoot. But do you know, Crochet, what'll happen to you? Have you ever heard a man condemned to death? I have. You can hear your heart going like a piston at the bottom of your throat. And you try to swallow and you can't. Because that's when you begin to feel the rope around your neck. And the trap door under your feet. And then from a long way off, you hear the judge's voice telling you that you're going to be hanged by the neck until you're dead. May the Lord have mercy on your soul. Pray with me, Crochet. Yes. Wait, you got my gun. Imagine. Come on, you're going to get out of here. I shan't be long, Gwen, and if anyone comes, you let me know. In the bedroom, Crochet. Now, how'd you get into my flat? From the roof, by rope. Then start climbing. Oh, the rope's gone. The police are downstairs. Don't worry, follow me. Through this window. Down that pipe, it leads into a passage. After that, you're on your own. You're a pal, Governor. A real pal. Well, do a pal a good turn before you go. Reach into that medicine cabinet and get the bottle labeled chloroform. Law love you, Governor. You're a pro. <laughs> AJ. AJ. He's dead. Yeah, let me have a look. Crochet got him. Huh? <laughs> No, no, he's not dead. He's been put out with something. A.J., please, please talk to me. Please. 
Uh, where am I? Oh. In your bedroom. Where's Crawshay? Nabbed, as we expected. Oh, I'm so glad you got him. I'll answer the door. You just stay where you are. Yeah. I say, what's going on here? Uh, who are you and what do you want? Oh, I might ask the same question of you. Oh, well, I'm a police inspector. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. I'm Mr. Raffles' man. I went out to get these air flight tickets for him. Air flight? I hand them over. Not without permission of Mr. Raffles. Mr. Raffles, do I have your permission to examine these tickets? Inspector McKenzie? Why, very definitely, yes. I, surely I, I have nothing to hide. Yeah, we shall soon see. Come on, hand them over, man. Yes, sir. With great reluctance. Uh, well, Amsterdam. Hmm. Oh, uh, hello, Raffles. Oh, the room is getting awfully crowded. Hello, Melrose. Bunny, too. Well, Inspector, what's the meaning of this dragging us up to town? You got the necklace or what? I'll have it in just a moment, Your Lordship. Where are the emeralds, Mr. Raffles? How would I know? Because you lifted them and because you're the amateur cracksman. Which is the first time I've heard that said. I dare say. But it's true, isn't it? Uh, what was your air flight to Amsterdam for, Mr. Raffles? Amsterdam is the jewel market of Europe. Mackenzie, if I took you seriously... Inspector, there must be some mistake. Oh, Mr. Bunny, well, eh, perhaps there is. And uh, how about you? Me, the amateur cracksman? Or perhaps you'd care to confess? Me! Lord Melrose, you told me you gave Mr. Bunny your telephone number on Friday night. That's right. Yep. You wrote it on a packet of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. That packet, with the imprint of the number on it, came to Scotland Yard yesterday morning, containing uncut diamonds stolen by the amateur cracksman... Saying he was returning it. But, but those weren't my... Oh, uh, yes, yes, perhaps they were. No good, Bunny. You mean... You mean... Hey, Jay. It's all right, Bunny. No, hey, Jay. How could you have been such a fool? Supposing I did need the money. Supposing I did go to jail. Do you think I'd ever have let you if I'd known? I asked you to help me, but I didn't mean... Hey, Jay, you fool. You fool. Oh, what's all this? What is all this bunny jail? I don't understand. It. I think I do. A.J. Oh, A.J. Darling. Are you the amateur cracksman, Mr. Raffles? Yes. And here are your emeralds. With one proviso. There are no provisos. Lord Melrose, you offered a thousand pounds reward. Am I correct? Correct. Bunny, hand these emeralds to Lord Melrose, and you are the recipient. No, one moment. Uh... Out of my way, Inspector. I'm in a hurry. Stop that man. Stop him. Extra special, extra special. Amateur cracksman still on the loose. Extra, extra. 24-hour man and on. Wanted, dead or alive. <laughs> Gwen. Gwen. AJ. What are you doing here in my flat? I've got something to tell you. What? What is it? You mustn't cry, ever. What did you come to say? That. And I love you. Oh, A.J., are you all right? Yes. What are you going to do? <laughs> That's something that I've never known. Do we meet again? If fate is more than usually kind. Oh, you shouldn't have come here. They'll be watching for you. I know. But I had to tell you three things. Three? One, you mustn't cry. Two, I love you. Oh. And three, um, what was the third? I won't cry, and I love you, too. And... Hmm. I can't remember. Couldn't have been important. I'm leaving through this window the way I came. Goodbye, my darling. Goodbye, A.J. Oh, that was it. What? The third thing. A.J., a donut. <laughs> <laughs> but don't hold it against me. Now, here's a word from the makers of Anison. Every day, you hear more and more about an incredibly fast way to relieve the pains of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. It's Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. 
Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So the next time a headache strikes, take Anison. A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30. Economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. Ask for Anison at any drug counter. Next week, the Screen Director's Playhouse presents another great motion picture story. Our adaptation is No Man of Her Own, starring Barbara Stanwyck and Lyle Betker. And now here again is tonight's star, Mr. Douglas Fairbanks. Thank you. Thank you, I... It's it's always a great pleasure to return to the Screen Director's Playhouse and... Particularly tonight, for it's very rewarding to be on the same stage with one of Hollywood's brightest talents. Ladies and gentlemen, I refer to the very brilliant writer and distinguished director, Mr. John Farrell. Thank you, Doug, for those extremely kind words. And thank you, too, for your outstanding portrayal of Raffles tonight. How I wish that our good friend Sam Wood, who directed the picture, could have been here to share share the enjoyment. Yes, Sam was a very great man. His memory occupies a very special niche in Hollywood's Hall of Fame. He was a master not only of drama, but also of comedy. He certainly would have enjoyed your latest and very funny picture, Mr. Drake's Duck, (laughs) in which you not only starred, but also produced. (laughs) Well... Thank you. And talking of producing, John, you leave most men far behind. Let's see, is it uh, six or seven now? Oh, I've produced more than six or seven pictures. Well, I wasn't referring to the pictures. I was referring to your seven beautiful children. <laughs> seven lively children. <laughs> <laughs> Douglas, for the Screen Director's Playhouse, please come back and visit us again soon. Good night. Thanks, John. Good night. Good night, all. You have been listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse, brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, and by the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. Raffles was presented through the courtesy of Samuel Goldwyn, whose newest production, I Want You, starring Dana Andrews, Dorothy McGuire, Farley Granger, and Peggy Dow, will soon be released. Douglas Fairbanks is being seen these days in his own production of Mr. Drake's Duck, released by United Artists. John Farrow directed the Paramount picture Submarine Command, starring William Holden, William Bendix, and Nancy Olson. Included in tonight's cast were Alma Lawton, Norma Varden, Ben Wright, Donald Morrison... Paul Fries, Dan O'Herlihy, Ramsey Hill, and Alec Harford. Raffles was adapted for radio by Jack Rubin. Screen Director's Playhouse is under the production supervision of Howard Wiley. It is directed by Bill Karn. Portions of tonight's broadcast were transcribed. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking, and inviting you to listen again next week when the Screen Director's Playhouse presents No Man of Her Own, starring Barbara Stanwyck and Lyle Betker. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.